Hello, folks. I'm Shaquille Tafel, the CEO of Secure Ninja, but I'm also an instructor. I've been teaching since, gosh, 1995. And I wanted to give you a demo of our live online and also talk a little bit about um, some areas of cybersecurity that are very challenging today. So if we take a look at cybersecurity challenges, we can see that we have more and more people connected than ever before. Now, one of my first jobs out of uh, college was a uh, computer science degree. I got a job as a programmer for America Online, and America Online was really doing well in the 90s. And in 1999, I remember, we became the largest internet provider in the world with guess how many users. Can anybody guess who's online? Who wants to guess? I'd say about 2 million. 2 million, a little low, but not Wor bad. Worldwide, uh, 300 million. 300 million, uh, possible. I think it was closer to 100 million. AOL was 30 million users. So 30 million users back in the days with modems and early broadband technologies was not a bad uh, uh, gig for AOL. But today, we have more than 7 billion people in the world and more than 55% of them are on the internet. And you can be on the internet, not only with computers and laptops, but mobile devices, tablets, internet of things. And so many ways to connect. And we have more than 4.5 billion people. So imagine 1999 to 2020, we've gone exponentially to 4,500 possibly more uh, million people online. That's a large attack surface. If you know, want to know what an attack surface is, we talk about threat modeling in some of our classes. Stay tuned. We also have more and more complexity. Unix 1.0 came out in 1971. It was the first major operating system, and that's where other flavors of Unix and Linux and Mac came from. And it was only 10,000 lines of code. Windows 3.1 was 2.5 million lines of code. Can you guess what Windows 10 or Mac OS 10, the latest version, Catalina, how many lines of code? Well, Windows 10, around 70 to 80 million lines of code. Catalina, uh, which is Mac, Mac OS 10, is around 100 million lines of code. That's a lot of complexity, a lot of code to uh, protect. And more and more risk of external vendors, third-party software, we have plugins, frameworks, open source software, APIs, application programming interfaces that are not in our control, that were written by other vendors or open source, and we also have to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities or weaknesses in them that can be exploited. And almost every one of these breaches, I mean, think about some of the breaches that we've had just in the past five years. We had the Sony breach, major breach, you know, took down um, Sony pictures, uh, emails and documents were stolen, uh, Sony Music was uh, infiltrated, Sony PlayStation Network, it was a massive breach. We had breaches at Adobe, at LinkedIn, Bank of America, Financial, JP Morgan Chase, Blue Cross Blue Shield lost 100 million records, um, and OPM, Office of Personnel Management for the government, every government employee and contractor was in there, was breached, and many other examples, right, Target, Home Depot, retail breaches, TJ Maxx. So how do we stop this bleeding and why is this happening, right? And all of them were compliant. All of them had followed the laws, regulations and, and so forth. So they still were breached. Now, one of the areas that is uh, something that is in our control is training. Being able to uh, train, self-train, uh, take classes, and through experience, become more knowledgeable at your job. But everybody has a responsibility for cybersecurity, whether it's for your home or for your office or business or it's your primary job, we have to be cognizant of security. Just like you lock your doors in the morning in your house or in your car or other physical devices, we have to lock down our computers. We have to lock down our apps. Quick question. Yes. Uh, I just got out of university and everyone's telling me to get certified uh, to find a good job. I was wondering what's the demand like for these certifications? That's a very good question. Let me show you a website real quick that in conjunction with NIST was created to give you kind of an idea of the supply and demand 
for cybersecurity. And if you take a look at the cybersecurity demand for the United States, we can see that almost 500,000 cybersecurity job openings exist in the United States. And that is unbelievable. In every job title, engineer, analyst, architect, manager, and so forth. We also have this heat map showing which states require more personnel. For instance, Virginia is showing that it requires almost 49,000 uh, job openings. California, 72,000 job openings. Other states, Texas, 43,000. But every state is showing that they need cybersecurity professionals. And if we take a look at the types of certifications that are recommended, you can see Security Plus, GIAC, Privacy Professional, CSSP, CISA, CISM, all of these courses that we've been teaching for years are absolutely in high demand and in some cases required in order for you to have that job or be on that contract. So there's a huge demand and we're barely able to fill it. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why we've had so many challenges in cybersecurity. So I talked about some of the challenges in the previous slide, but also take a look at the technology. We went from dumb terminals and mainframes to desktop applications to client server applications. And then with the advent of the internet in the late 80s, early 90s, we had internet web hosting, internet applications, and now the big buzzword, cloud native applications, apps on our phone and tablets and so forth. On the hardware side, you can see that we started with just a basic terminal that had no uh, hardware uh, processing, it had no storage, it had no memory, and we went from this to distributed servers, to large individual servers, to distributed servers in different data centers all over the world, to web server farms, and now your hardware is all virtualized. Virtualized and software-defined everything, software-defined networking, software-defined operating systems, and so forth. So we went from basically full control to what would we say, loss of control, right? So our control uh, is probably, you know, a very low percentage compared to what is in our control, such as software has open source, it has plugins, it has APIs that were not written by us. The source code that we write is a very small percentage of the entire system. The hardware is in the cloud. It's in Amazon or Azure or Rackspace or another cloud vendor or data center. It is not in our control. It is rented, okay? Uh, virtualized networking, right, is many times uh, managed by a service provider. So the loss of control can also lead to some of the problems and some of the cybersecurity challenges we had because we have to be able to work with other partners and vendors to secure our products. We also have new technologies like Internet of Things. What are some other technologies coming out that are very exciting but at the same time very scary? Can anybody guess? I've put in some of the ideas in chat dialogue. Oh, in the chat? Let me take a look. So even if you uh, don't have a microphone or don't want to use a microphone, maybe you you've got stuff happening in the background, you can always go to our chat window and uh, type in there. So let's see what you've typed in there. Okay, so I see, uh, let's see, big data, self-driving cars, drones, IoT devices, artificial intelligence. Absolutely, these are all amazing technologies coming up. What about 5G wireless technologies? 5G wireless technologies? 5G is here, absolutely. Thanks, Carlos. But my uh, personal favorite is AI, right? Now you can call Siri and Cortana 
and Bixby on Samsung and Alexa on Amazon and and uh, the list goes on. Okay, Google. And this is going to, it's already changing a lot of the landscape. In fact, I was recently teaching a threat intelligence class and a large part of that was machine learning and artificial intelligence. So some exciting things coming up, but we have to learn how to secure these technologies. Attackers have more time and patience and they don't need any money because they're using other people's uh, tools and internet and equipment. We need to be proactive. We must think like an attacker and we must be knowledgeable. So please take advantage of our live online. We have videos on our Secure Ninja TV that I'm, I'm sure you'll find very uh, knowledgeable and entertaining as well. And I want you to try the live online courses right now and uh, uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, live online is a fantastic option for you to safely log in to our classroom and have the same experience as if you were in front of an instructor and having the bi-directional communication, having the ability to chat, ask questions, and you can do the same labs you would do inside of a classroom and we could put the labs in the cloud. We can send labs to you that you can do on your computer and you'll get the same experience as if you had an instructor standing in front of you. Also, any class that you take with us, especially the live online, you can take again within one year for free and you can take it live online or when instructor-led training is available, you can come in and do instructor-led training as well. And there are many other benefits. Check out our website, secureninja.com, and please join us and improve cybersecurity together. Thank you very much.